Hey, hello and welcome once again to my YouTube channel. This is Reflex Image. This is your first time visiting. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And also turn on the notification icon. And if you're already a subscriber, welcome back. So in this video, I'll be showing you how I came about this backdrop, how I got this backdrop, how I manipulated this backdrop. So here's what my picture looks like before. As you can see, the backdrop is a very, very cheap backdrop. I got it for less than $5 here in Nigeria. So I transformed this backdrop to something like this with just a few symbols. Simple click and I'll be showing you how I do that. Please kindly share this video with your friend if you find it educating and drop a like also. It's going to help the video go viral. So with no further ado, let's jump into action. So this layer over here, just count it as invisible. This is not a formality. This is a combination of everything I've done to get to this stage. So this is not part of what we'll be working on. So just turn this off right now. So here's what our picture looked like before. So I did an extension here. Here is where the background goes to before. I just did the extension and expand it to this area. So to do that right now, all you just need to do is to go to your crop, select the size you want, then drag from each side and drag from any of those four sizes to whatever radius you want. So with this right now, it should be have it should have more wider space, as in more border room to your picture. So after that, I'm being seen right now, the next thing you need to do is to retouch your picture. I've done that for this particular picture, so I'm going just going to jump straight to manipulation. First thing when it comes to manipulation is for it to go to your background layer. Duplicate your background layer by clicking on Ctrl or Command J if you're using a MacBook. So once you're done with that, after that, go to your quick selection tool, then click on select subjects. So you're going to select, it's going to select a subject for you. You can use quick selection, you can use polygonal lasso tool, you can use lasso tool, whatever tool that you know how to use best to remove backdrop. But if you actually don't know how to remove backdrop, watch my previous video. There are tons of videos on my video or my YouTube that is going to teach you. How to remove background perfectly without any issue. So I already have my background selected right now. All I just need to do is to load it back, load selection, and I'm going to bring it up, bring it out like this. Here's my backdrop over here. As you can see, I already have a perfect selected backdrop. All I just need to do right now is to right click on it. I'll be feathering it by one pixel. Use one pixel as my feather radius. I'll click on my OK. Then I'm going to click on my max icon over here. So you won't just you won't know what to just did right now until you have to turn off your background layer. Then you see we've separated our subject from the backdrop right now. So turn back the background layer right now. So this is our subject layer right now. So let's name this layer our subject layer so that we won't get confused while working on later on. So let's name it our model, our model layer. So we'll go back to the background layer again now. Duplicate this once more. Once you're done with that, you hold down your control key, click on the max of your model layer, click on the max. Then go to select under select, go to modify, then expand. You're going to be expanding by eight pixel. Click on OK. After you're done with that right now, go to the rectangle marker tool, then scroll from the top, scroll from this right hand side, scroll from the left hand side, scroll from down below. So what you're trying to do right now, I want to fill this whitish area up with the initial background color. As you can see, we're selecting that area, but we also add part of the background to it. So that the AI is going to know where to actually fill the color it and what color to actually fill there. We want to fill it with the initial backdrop color so that it's going to be very very wide and also hyper realistic at the same time. So that's how that's why we came about this idea to select the area we want to fill up and also to add part of the background to it. So that being said, right now, the next thing I just need to do right now is just to right-click on it, then go to fill. Under fill, I'll go to content away, click on my OK. So let's wait for the AI to do the selection for us. So most of the time it does 100% accuracy and some other time 90%, you just have to make a few amendments to it. But right now, as you can see, it gave us 100% accuracy. So no one will know our background is not this white. So control D to the select right now. The next thing you need to do is to turn off your subject layer. So let's name this layer we, which we uh, filled up. Let's name it our uh, modify, modify, modify layer. So that I won't get confused. So the next thing we do, pick your parts to tackle the area that you don't want to be there, then drag to a cleaner area. For this area, I don't like the shadow that here, so I'll drag it to a cleaner area to fill it up with a cleaner area. You can see right now. So Ctrl D to select back again. So under my modify layer right now, I'm going to duplicate it once more by clicking on Ctrl J again. This time around, I'll just have to go to blur my filter under filter. I go to blur, then I'll click on my Gaussian blur. So under my Gaussian blur, I'll be using 100 as my radius. Then I'll click on my OK. So I'm done with that right now. I'll turn back my subject layer now. So this modify copy which you blow out now, let's rename it our blah. Let's name it blah. 
So after I blurred it out, you can see my shadow, my footer shadow is no longer there again. And that's what most people complain about that. They tend to lose their footer shadow while doing manipulation and blurring a backdrop. And without the footer shadow, you won't have a nice manipulation. So the best way to actually return your footer shadow back is to create a max on your blur layer, create a max, this camera icon, click on it. Then you pick your normal brush color. If this is on white, make sure your brush color is on black. So reduce the brush size till it fits the footer area. Then scroll over the area I want the shadow to come back to. You can see. Can you see right now? We already have our shadows back and it's looking very, very nice. So that being said, right now, you can just export your, you can collaborate your picture from this place, export it, then you're good to go. But this is where our manipulation starts from. All you just need to do right now is to go to where our files are located and drag it into Photoshop. So I'll just go to my file manager right now and I'll go to where my files are located and I'll start bringing them in one after the other. So if you're interested in getting up my picture editing files, they're available in my store. You can just go and make purchase today and they're going to help your picture editing skill. They're going to make it very, very easy and hyper realistic at the same time. And they're going to take your picture editing skill to the next level. So this is the background we're using right now. I just have to drag it down to my Photoshop. You can see, then I'm going to extend it. I will extend it till I see if it's till I see if it. Don't worry about this line on the edge. The reason why I did not work more on this is because we are still returning the background color. We are still using blue as our background color right now. So I think around this way is okay. I just have to click on my OK. So once I'm done with that, under it right now, I'm just going to control U on it. Then I'm going to reduce the saturation. I don't want saturation to be there again. I'll click on my OK right now. So that I just have to reduce the opacity to about 40 let's use 50 percent of our opacity for and see what it's going to give to us let's use 50 percent 50 percent you can see right now which is very very nice we just texturize our backdrop right now and it's looking very very nice and hyper realistic at the same time so you can just collaborate your picture this way equally today so let's just add a little bit of effect to it i want to add a little bit of yellow to the top over here so that the background won't be all that blue from A to Z. So just modify it a little bit. To do that right now, just have to create an empty new layer on it on the background I just brought in right now. You can see my color is already on yellow and my brush is already selected. Then I'm going to reduce my brush size to the highest, which is 5000. And I'm going to click once from the top like this. I'll make sure half of the cycle is inside the box and half is outside. I'll click on it. Wait for it to load up. And boom, it actually did load up. So we we'll use the opacity from 100, we we'll bring it down to whatever we want. I think 55 is okay. Now click on my OK. Look at what we just achieved right now. Look at how simple and hyper realistic our backdrop is right now. Easy as that. All you just need to do right now is to start our color grading and we'll call it a day. And I'll be using just a single file for my color grading right now, which is my melanin skin tone. Because I, my mood is a dark skin person. So I'll just add the color grading and we export our picture. To do that right now, I'll click on my model layer, which is the uppermost layer right now. I'll go to the adjustment layer, then I'll click on my color lookup. So under the load 3D lot right now, I'm going to open it up and I'm going to scroll down. So I see my name, my melanin, this one. And boom. You can see right now. It gave us a automatic dark skin. So let's use the opacity right now. Too much my liking. Let's use the opacity. Click on OK. But we are having an issue right now. Look at the bluish uh, area is still showing in our picture, which we don't like. So let me show you how to clean this off right now before we call it a day. All you just need to do right now is to click on, click on, double click on your model max, double click on it. It's going to open up an entire new panel for you. And this new panel right now, you just have to pick the starting brush, which is the refined edge brush, the second brush over here. Then increase the brush size. You scroll over the area you want to remove the backgrounds from. Scroll over it provide so it's going to remove the background for you but it's not everything in total so once you're done with it right now just have to click on ok it's going to take you back to photoshop then let's zoom in so i want to show you a particular thing i do so i'll just go back to my layer my subject layer itself which is my model then i'll go to layer under layer i'll go to meeting under meeting i'll click on color decontaminate wait for it to load up and boom it's going to remove the remnants of the uh background in the air for us click on ok and automatically you just achieve a hyper realistic backdrop very very simple and straightforward so i hope this video helps if it does don't forget to like and subscribe and also turn on the notification icon to stay updated about my latest video see you guys in my next tutorial reflex out if you're interested in getting any of my picture editing file from my overlays down to my color lookup which is my lot file 
so you just have to scroll down to your video so under the comment this is my description so it's not going to load the description for you you just have to click on show more click on it so it's going to show all the options once it does that just click on my store link so here's my store link once you click on it it's going to take you directly to my store so you can actually select any file you want from the color lookup this is a light skin lots this is a feather which i use in my recent video this is 100 premium baby overlays this is my fourth video course this video course entails on how to download all the files i want the site i use in downloading all my files free of charge including my photoshop panels also this includes my png files this includes all my packs all my picture editing files my premium overlay my png my flying fabric my color lookup my preset so once you buy this you've already bought everything apart from this one so here is my flying fabrics here is my in case you want to give me any project for me to work on here is my color lookup here is my background overlay and here is my preset file so in case you're interested in buying anyone you can actually go for them the good news there is that you can actually buy your own currency any currency of your choice you can buy with any currency of your choice 